This is iCastNews.com, live and direct from the United Nations headquarters in New York City. And this is out of Africa. Out of Africa as we get ready to end summer and begin the school year. This week at the United Nations, we've had the Youth Assembly going on. People from throughout the world coming to get a sense of what young people need to know and what young people are thinking about the United Nations. Joining us is a representative of one of the better schools in Nigeria, the Green Springs School, Jennifer Suhimi Kwazim. Jennifer, welcome. Thank you, Jennifer. It's been an exciting week here at the United Nations with your students. It's been really, really, really exciting. Uh, so you've got a students who've come here who are, who are curious about the United Nations. But in general, I wonder if you have the problem that I sometimes run into where students don't know too much about the United Nations. My students sometimes know that it's in New York and it deals with the rest of the world. And maybe once a year they have a lot of ambassadors here in colorful uniforms. Do you run into that problem about uh, knowledge about the UN? Uh. A typical school in Nigeria, you know, wouldn't talk about the UN. And um, I know that um, a few schools um, have um, the mother UN going on for them, but it's not something that is um, very common. Okay, and um, as a school, we're very passionate about giving back to the society. And we think that um, exposing our students to the UN activities, having to know what the UN is all about, and the SDGs now, not the MDGs anymore, will kind of inspire them, you know. We, we should explain the, uh, that we're talking about the st Sustainable Development Goals, mm. which the UN is going to ratify this September, mm. including an important one is uh, knowledge and, and education. Yeah, yeah, quality education, you know. So for us, it's a big thing. The students are very passionate about giving back, and um, what better way to do that other than to link it, you know, to... Um, um, achieving the SDGs, you know. Yeah. Do Do you think having spent a week with students from all over the world and seeing it both through your own eyes as an educator and through the eyes of your students, that there's anything surprising from students coming out of Nigeria? I mean, we're we're talking about a sophisticated, relatively uh, wealthy state as far as Africa goes, with a good educational system and growing out of Britain, a, a heritage of, of belief in you get ahead by getting education. It, are, do you see your students saying, wow, I never know, or this is surprising, or yeah. these students, I've got to catch up with them. What, what's this, the, the viewpoint that you've taken away from this week here? You know, for the boys, they just came out from a workshop a few minutes ago, and um, they said they wanted to go to the workshop that has to do with um, pure energy. And I asked them, so what did you take out of it? They were like, wow. That that's what they want to start thinking about now. That once they get back home, you know, they're going to start talking to other boys. You know, and I was saying to them, I wasn't really surprised that as boys, you prefer that workshop. The girls went on to the workshop that has to do with youth involvement with the SDG. And um, in that workshop, they talked about um, gender equality and quality education. And um, my so so let, let's take these two things and separate them out. Gender equality and quality education. There's a big movement at the United Nations. And I'm going to say it's one of the better things that the Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has done, UN women and pushing the women's agenda. And there's a lot of discussion. Maybe even we'll get a woman as the new Secretary General. What do the young women, I'll call them girls. <laughs> they, I saw them. They're, they're quite beautiful and very well spoken. What do, do the the young women, your girls, what do they think gender equality means? Um, for them, they, they feel that um, they, sh they have a voice. They should be given the right to be able to speak. Um, back in Nigeria, especially in the East, being a lady, you cannot, um, you cannot buy land. You cannot inherit anything from your father. You know, for them, they feel that um, they should be given that right as well. That to make the decisions themselves. Yeah. So it's, not, it's not an issue of wanting to be like the boy or the man, that they should be given the right to express themselves. Okay, and um, 
even though some quite a number of them since they are they are they are from very exposed family so to say they know that there are girls back at home that they can really go out to help girls that are forced into early marriage girls that don't have the same opportunity as they have you know to go to school to be educated so for them they are taking that out of the youth assembly and they are going back home to influence or inspire other girls in their school in our school to go out there and see what they can do for other girls are are, are they horrified your your students of what happened to these young women by boko haram who captured women and because as you know that's it's one of the few times that people in the united states were paying attention not only to women's issues in africa but to nigerian women's issues yeah. i mean the president's wife w uh, w was out demanding freeing these girls yeah. w is this a cause uh, uh, an injustice in your society that is very painful to your students? Of course it is. Of course it is. I remember last, um, was it last year, when um, um, they had to discuss it in class. Yeah. They had to discuss how they can go about, you know, making sure or, or, or being the voice that the girls don't have, you know. And um, for them, they can't just imagine it. They can't, they, because they're not exposed to that kind of thing. They, they can't imagine not being with their fathers. They can't imagine not being with their moms. And they can't imagine that we're all just going about our daily lives as if nothing has happened. You know, and um, they think something should be done about it. And um, well, we as educators, we're saying to them that just keep talking about it. Do, were people asking them about it here from other countries? Was, was that an issue that other youths, when you said, ah, we're from Nigeria, that people raised with you? Um, not really. Not so really. That's, it, that's really interesting and indicative, too, of how little people know. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, you know, usually, usually when pe you say Nigeria to people uh, here, you know, they, they, they talk about oil or they talk about traffic congestion in Lagos yeah. or they talk about these girls or they talk about uh, polio, um, quality education. They were talking about that as, as one of the sustainable development goals. Yeah. What does quality education mean to your students and to you? Quality, quality education to my students um, mean being able to compete anywhere in the world, being able to, to express themselves, being confident, which is what we really stand for as a school, being confident um, and um, um, uh, having that holistic education, not just the education that has to do with the academics. Mm -hmm. you know, if a child is gifted in the art, why not pursue that dream? If a child wants to do dance as a career, why not pursue, pursue that dream? Okay, so for them, it's about choices. And um, it's not just about that stereotype testing and English and math. It's about so, so many other things. And they think that education should be fluid. You know, you should, um, you should go for whatever it is that you want to go, go whatever, whatever profession you want to go into, you should be able to go into that profession. But above all, above all, they are a bit concerned because um, one of them said that how do we talk about quality education in our country when our parents don't even want us to be teachers? Mm -hmm. How do we talk about quality education in our country when we know that education isn't accessible to every child? You know, that accessibility is very key, very important before even talking about quality education. That for some countries, they may be at the level of quality education, but for some countries, accessibility really is the level they are at right now. Uh, 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 excuse me, because I don't know. What's the uh, literacy rate in Nigeria? What, what percentage of young people are literate? Hmm. I'm not sure myself, but um, just on top of my head, I could say maybe about 50% um, because um, I know that um, it's not uncommon to see children on the street hawking. <laughs> I've seen that in yeah. Lagos myself. Yeah, it's, not uncommon. it's not uncommon to see girls going into early marriage. It's not uncommon mm. to see, I mean, with all what's happening, all um, 
the violence happening here and there, of course, children are bound to be out of school. And all that's why I probably see maybe 60 So this is not your first time coming to the UN in the summer, right? So what are you going to take back and incorporate into the curriculum of the Green Springs School that you've learned, especially this year, but in general uh, on making multiple visits to New York and the United Nations? You know, over the years, having attended the Youth Assembly, I feel that as an educator, one of the things that um, we should be telling students is um, 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 service learning. That is, it's very cool, it's very okay to blame the government for everything, but what are you doing, you know, within your classroom? What are you doing within your family? What are you doing within your local community? And um, we've been able to inculcate that into the curriculum. Even the preschoolers do a form of community service mm -hmm. during the holiday. But I would say that um, going back home after this summer, one of the things that I would probably want to look into is how to inculcate knowledge about the United Nations, you know, into the curriculum, at least at secondary and sixth form level. Mm -hmm. And sixth form, sixth form level is, is the last year of high school in yeah. a traditional uh, uh, curriculum. Is there one thing that you saw this year or heard that really one person who, who spoke who really said, you, wow, I'm going to, that really riveted my attention, that's really a powerful insight? Mm -hmm. Having um, worked with teenagers for quite a number of years now, I know that um, one thing that I'm very passionate about, if I'm allowed, is um, probably to work in a very typical local school where I can help the less privileged children. I haven't been able to accomplish that, I'll say, as a person, and um, I've been struggling with it. And. Um, I was thinking, how do I go about establishing this NGO and manage it with my my job as well? But um, a a lady from Nigeria came and spoke. Her name is Nkechi. Mm -hmm. She spoke about um, um, gender equality. I have been struggling whether to go into the girl child or to go into education generally. Okay, having to establish my NGO, but having heard Kichi talk yesterday, I was like, wow, that is exactly what I needed to make up my mind. So I'm thinking that personally I'm going to look into education for the girl child, for the less privileged. No matter how difficult it's going to be, combining that with my job is something I know I'm going to definitely start. This that, year. That's a, 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 a wonderful, as we would say, takeaway for the summer and the youth assembly at the UN. And we'll look forward to hearing a year from now how you've managed to do with that and um, see, see if you can make a, a difference in getting students interested in the UN and the larger world at uh, the Green Springs School in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Jennifer, thank you thank so, you much, so for, much for for joining thank us. Thank you, thank you. This has been ICASTnews.com, live and direct from United Nations headquarters in New York City. For Out of Africa, I'm Jonathan Sanders.